more heartache, no more tears, no more dying. across this place and extend your praise as we sing about the goodness of our God. So I was lost in shame, could not get past my name to the all my name. Oh, I'm so glad he changed me. Darkness
I got peace in the storm. I got strength in the battle. I don't fear anymore. I'm a child of heaven. My hope is secure. I got joy because I've got Jesus. another moment would you give God something that he loves would you give him your praise right now he sure does love your praise oh he loves your praise tonight he loves for you to call out his name oh Jesus we love you oh Jesus we praise you tonight oh hallelujah Lamb of God glory glory praise your mighty name tonight Oh, the author of my salvation, my bride and my morning star, I give you praise, I give you worship. It was in Mark chapter 2 that four men brought their friend who was paralyzed. As a matter of fact, the story of the man, we refer to it as the man sick of palsy, which just simply means he was paralyzed. He was unable to walk. But this man in this story has at least four friends that decide that they're going to take him, they're going to take him where he cannot go. He cannot go to Jesus, but they're going to take him. We know as we read Mark chapter 2 that when they got to the house where Jesus was at, there was a crowd of people around the door. They couldn't even get this man they're carrying on a stretcher they couldn't even get him in the door but thank God once again these four men 
come up with a genius idea. We'll tear the roof off. We will lower the man down. And Mark chapter 2, verse number 5, simply says, And when Jesus saw their faith. Does it say anything about the man that's paralyzed? It says, when Jesus saw their faith, the man was healed by the power of God. Now it's prayer time tonight. And there are people that we're praying for that are unable to be here. But we can bring them here tonight, can't we? There's people here, there's people that they've not spoken a word. They're not here. Some may not even know they should call out on the Lord. But that's all right, Mama. That's all right, Dad. Go ahead and call that prodigal's name out tonight. Because what this is about right now, think about this. God could very well touch a loved one tonight because he looks down. And when we begin to pray, he sees our faith. Prayer tells God we believe in him. Prayerlessness tells God we don't, know, we don't need him. But I need him tonight. And in just a moment, I know God's going to see my faith tonight because I'm going to bring my faith to the surface and I'm going to begin to pray. Would you please help me remember tonight Mother Zeander? She is recovering from having a fall and breaking her arm in a couple of places. Let's please remember Mother Zeander tonight. And also, let's lift up a special prayer for William and Stacy Cooper's daughter, Maddie. Maddie is one sick little girl right now, and Maddie needs a healing touch from the Lord. Please remember to pray for Sister Ankenbauer tonight that the Lord would touch her as she recovers from surgery. Please remember to pray for Sister Linda Thompson tonight that God's hand would be upon her. And then call out the names you'll see scrolling across the screen tonight. These are people that are not here, but God can look down and see our faith tonight, and God can move on behalf of these needs that are scrolling across the screen. Would you lift up your hands with me right now? Father, we come before you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I know that you're a prayer answering God. I know, God, that you hear. I know that you care. God, I know that when we mention your name, Jesus, God, that you hear us when we pray. Lord, I bring these petitions before you tonight. Father, I pray for Mother Zeander. I pray, Lord, that you would allow these bones to mend in a speedy manner, God. You would touch Mother Zeander tonight. Lord, I ask you this evening, God, for you to touch Maddie Cooper. God, let your hand be upon Maddie tonight. Lord, let the healing power of your presence, Lord, be upon Maddie right now. God, touch Sister Linda Thompson. And Lord, touch Sister Ankin Bauer tonight. And God, the names that are scrolling across the screen tonight. Oh, God, touch our sons and our daughters this evening. Lord, move upon the needs tonight. Lord, move upon them tonight, God. Oh, God, move upon our sons and our daughters. Move upon our prodigals tonight. Lord, move upon those that are in the, in the shackles of addiction tonight. God, would you move upon them with your mighty hand and would you move upon them with your mighty power. Now, Jesus, we know you hear our prayer. We ask all these things in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you believe God heard your prayer, why don't you give him a praise right now? Why don't you give him a thunderous praise right now? Oh, yes, I know God hears us tonight. I know God hears us tonight. I know that God hears us tonight. You may be seated. Our ushers, if they would be making their way to the front at this time, it's so good, Sister Carpenter and I want to say that it is so good to be back home. We were privileged to go down to Louisiana and uh, preach for Brother and Sister Hill, Brother Donovan and Sister Valerie Hill there in their great church. And we had a wonderful, we had a wonderful time. We had a wonderful time there. Um, you know, in life, I guess you got to find a little humor along the way. But I can remember, it seemed like not so long ago, that I got called upon to do youth camps and 
youth rallies and youth explosions and, and uh, youth extravaganzas, youth, 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 youth. And I was called upon to come and preach grandparents Sunday. And that's all right, can I tell you? I believe the same fire that we had as a teenager is the same fire that we still have burning on the inside of us. But we want to say how good it is to be back home tonight. We love you all, and we miss, we miss you so much. I was so thrilled to hear about the generous offering that was received here Sunday night to build a Bible college in Mexico. I, I was so I was so thrilled Ben and Becca Rodriguez is doing such a wonderful job. And obviously, obviously you all bought in. And I believe I saw this on social media. Would you give God praise for $82,000? And I give God praise. I give God, God praise for that this evening. Also, I want to announce that this coming Friday night and Saturday morning, is our men's conference. And brothers, please avail yourself of this because it's being hosted here at First Apostolic Church. There will be men here that paid a very hefty registration fee to be a part of the men's conference. But because it is being hosted here, all of the men of the FAC Maribel campus and FAC Sevierville campus all of you get to come. Well, it's not really, it's, I don't want to say it's free. I don't want to say it's free, but we're making a way for you to come, all the men to come. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time this Friday night and this Saturday. It's going to be a wonderful time, and you don't, you don't want to miss it. You're going to get preached to. Think about this. You're going to get preached to. You're going to get your, you're going to get your toes stepped on. And you can do it without the elbow of your wife there, all right? You can do it without her elbowing you that you needed that. And so you be here Friday night. You be here Saturday. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Let's pray. Precious God of heaven, thank you for health in my body. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the ability to earn an income, to feed, shelter, and clothe my family. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that through your word you brought to light that I can become through tithe and offerings, I can become a financial partner with you. And Lord, because of tithing and offerings, you have opened up the windows of heaven and you have poured out unbelievable blessings upon our lives. Lord, receive this offering tonight as we give it from the bottom of our cheerful hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Let's give tonight.
Oh, let's sing it one more time through. One more time. Let's make one large choir here tonight. One large choir here tonight. I surrender all to you tonight, God. I surrender all to you tonight, God. Oh my. Just one more time with hands lifted and hearts open to God. Sing it from the bottom of your heart. Here we are, Jesus. Here we are, Lord. before I read my text. Let's just give him praise. Here am I, God. Oh, God, here am I, God. Here am I, God. God, I surrender all that I am. I surrender all that I'll ever be, God. I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours, God. I'm yours, God. Oh, I'm yours, God. I'm yours, Lord. If you have your Bibles and would join me in the first book of John, now, not the Gospel of John, but the first book of John, 1 John. 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 14. 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 14. Simply says, John writes, and he says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Let me read verse 14. Let me read verse 14 again. And this is the confidence, the confidence. You see, I want us to have confidence in prayer. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. For a few moments tonight in this Bible lesson, I would like to minister to you on the subject of praying, praying the will of God. Praying, praying the will of God. Lord Jesus, tonight, I thank you for your word that is our light. I thank you tonight, God, for your word that has creative power. I thank you tonight, Lord, for your word that is truth. I pray tonight that you would anoint my lips of clay, that as I minister your word, that these words would fall upon hungry hearts that want to grow and want to know you through the word. Lord, be with us. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand of praise as you're being seated. <laughs> Praying the will of God. Brother Carl Franklin, it's so good to see you tonight. So good to see him. The last time I saw him, he looked good, but he's in the hospital. And tonight, he looks better because he's at church. Amen. Brother Carl, so good to see you tonight. Praying, praying the will, praying the will of God. Now, John, as he writes, he is very emphatic. And he says, we have this confidence. In other words, I'm going to tell you what you can put your confidence in. I'm going to tell you what I have faith in is that if we ask, pray, anything that is in accordance and agreement with his will, not might hear us, 
not maybe, but the Bible is a clear cut, 100%. If we pray something according to his will, that he hears, he hears our petition. Now, we understand that in Luke chapter 11 and verse 2, and if you'd put that verse on the screen, at their request to teach us how to pray, Jesus said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and look at these next four words, thy will, thy will be done. Thy will. So when we pray, when we are being taught how to pray, we are informed that we are to pray in accordance with God's will. We're to pray in accordance with God's will. I will tell you tonight that I believe a lot of people have lost faith in prayer because they have taken too many things to God that was their will. Their will and not God's will. And so Jesus said when you pray, you are to come to a part in your prayer that you are saying thy will be done. Now we have to understand that our will must submit, and what a beautiful song to segue into this Bible lesson, Lord, I surrender all. I surrender all. What a, what a wonderful way to say, God, not my will be done, but your will be done. Now, to understand what the will of the Lord is, you have to get in the Bible and find out what are God's thoughts, what are God's desires, what are his thoughts, what is God's desires. And we have to learn how to bring our will into agreement, into agreement with his will. We have to find out what is your will, God? What, is your, what are your desires, God? What is your will? What are your thoughts? And that can only come to pass, that can only be gathered when we study God's word. When we have, and this is one of the many reasons that we are faithful to the house of God because it is at the house of God that every service, God's word is going to be preached. God's word is going to be taught. And it's there as we listen to God's word read and we listen to God's word expounded upon that we can begin to see, okay, God, this is your thoughts. Okay, God, this is your desire. And Lord, it doesn't matter what my will is, for I know that your will is far superior to my will. But isn't that really where trust comes in? Don't we really have to just learn how to know that Father does know best? And that when we begin to not just come to God with a grocery list, of God give me this and God give me that and God do this for me and God I'm uncomfortable with life over here and God would you, would you help me to be more comfortable in life? That's not necessarily praying God's will. Praying God's will is finding out his desires, finding out his thoughts. As a matter of fact, when we come into agreement with God's will, there is available for you and I unlimited power in our lives, when our will comes into agreement, when our will comes into agreement with God. Oh, we've often used the phrase, I'm walking with the Lord. I'm walking with the Lord. Well, that's wonderful. Can I read to you Amos chapter 3 and verse number 3? Brother Carpenter, I'm walking with God. I've got to walk with God. That's wonderful. But Amos asked all of us a question. Can two... Walk together except they be agreed. In other words, how's two people going to walk together if they're not in agreement with the direction they're going and they're not in agreement with the destination that they're going? You see tonight, Bible study class, 
tonight, it's as simple as I can make it. Our destination is heaven. And our heavenly Father did everything that he could do so that we could spend eternity with him. He wants to spend eternity with us. And so our destination tonight is heaven. Our destination tonight is not to be necessarily financially this or financially that or, or happy here or happy that. As a matter of fact, God wants us to be holy over the pursuit of being happy. But I want you to know that if we will set out to be holy, happiness is just a byproduct. True happiness is a byproduct. And can you give the Lord a hand? True happiness is a byproduct of being holy. Oh, how what he has done for us. The unlimited power of agreement with God. When we come in agreement, when we come into agreement with God. See Psalms chapter 106 in verse number 11, presents to us the tale of Israel and how that they fell out of agreement with God. You see, we don't have any time, we don't have any, we, we don't have any problem agreeing with God when we're blessed and highly favored and the blessings are flowing our way, everything's going our way. We really don't have a problem, we don't really have a problem being in agreement with God then. It's when things are not going our way it's when we, we have to learn how to trust him. And so in Psalms 106, God's people, well, let's, let me begin to read in Psalms 106, verse 11. He's telling about delivering Israel from Egypt. He says, and the waters covered their enemies. That's talking about the Red Sea. There was not left one of them. That's talking about all of Pharaoh's army was drowned. Then... Believe they his words. In other words, Israel, when they saw the Egyptians drown, Israel believed all of the words of God. They not only believed it, but look what they also did. They sang praise to his name. They began to sing praises. Maybe tonight, let me just kind of prick you a little bit. There's a lot of people, uh, I don't like the new songs and I don't like, can I tell you, every generation had new songs. The songs that you like were new to some generation, all right? They were, they were, new, they were new to some generation. I had some fun with a, someone here a while back. They were saying, Bill Carpenter, the new courses, the new things, it's just saying the same thing over and over and over again. And I said, oh, would you like to sing some of those songs that we used to sing? Like, Remember the ones we used to sing like, I've got it? Oh, yeah, I like that song. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Something about the power of the Holy Ghost, I can't explain it, but. You see tonight what maybe, and I'm going to kind of put, you, put your feet out tonight, I'm going to walk on a little bit. Maybe you don't have a taste of singing is you've got an issue with believing. Because when you begin to believe his word, you will automatically sing his praise. You'll have something to sing about when you believe his word. But if you don't believe his word, you don't have anything to sing about. Because he's not brought you out of anything. But when you believe his word, all of a sudden, you've got a song that you can sing. Verse 12, then believed they his words. They sang his praise. But here we are. They soon forget his works. They waited not for his counsel. When they got in a pinch, when they got out in the wilderness, they began to get thirsty and they began to get hungry. And they did not wait on his counsel. They did not wait on his word. They did not wait on him. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them, this is what I want you to look at according to our prayer life. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their souls. He said, they prayed to me. They asked of me certain things. I was not in agreement with them. But I went ahead and gave them what they asked for. But it produced leanness in their soul. If there's a part of us that needs to be healthy, it's got to be our souls. 
because our souls are going to live forever somewhere. And it's only if your soul is knit to God is that soul going to spend eternity with its creator. And so we have to be careful in prayer when we're asking God for something and we're disappointed when it doesn't come and we're discouraged when it doesn't come, can we just have enough faith and trust in God that we're asking God for things that he's not giving us? Can we have enough faith and trust to simply say, God, it must not be for me. It must not be the right thing for me. But I still give you praise, God, and I still trust you, God, although I may not have these things. He said, I gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. Now, what he's referring to here, what he's referring to here is that this delivered group of people, the Israelites, this delivered group of people got tired of eating the manna that God gave them. They got weary. They got weary. They got tired. God gave them water. God gave them manna or bread, bread from heaven. But they got tired of it. They got wearied with it. It became common to them. Well, look with me in Exodus chapter 16, verse number 15. And when the children, Exodus 16, verse 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, this manna, they said one to another, it is manna. For they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Now, they got out and they needed, they needed bread. God knew they needed bread. But God wanted to show them that he was the giver of this bread. And so every morning, every morning for six days, God would allow this manna to be delivered with the dew. It was miraculous. Everybody say miraculous. It was miraculous. It was the bread. It was the bread of heaven. It was bread that God gave them every morning. Every morning it was there. It was manna. Matter of fact, the word manna just simply means what is it? Well, it's a gift from God. Can we all agree tonight that we should stay continually thankful for anything that we know is a gift from God. Anything we know is a gift from God, we should never let it grow common. Anything we know is a gift from God, we should never let it be average. Anything that we can say, I know this is a gift from God, we should forever just say, thank you, Jesus, for this gift. Thank you, Lord. I, I know we sang, we sang a song tonight about you turn my life around, joy. And you hear a lot of things, you hear a lot of songs here. And, and you hear a lot of songs here about being in bondage and being out. You hear a lot of songs about being in darkness and being out. You know why these songs are for? For we never to forget. These songs are not just for the new converts. These songs are for us that's been in the church for a while because salvation is a gift from God and I never want it to grow common. I never I never wanted to be average. He saves my, he saved my soul. Always, always, church, give thanks for what the Lord has given to you. God gave them the manna. But now turn with me to Numbers chapter 11, verse number four. Numbers chapter 11, verse number four. Sometime later, this happened. Verse number four says, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? Now that's an interesting verse because everybody that came out of Egypt didn't come out by the blood of the lamb. There were just folks that night that when Egypt started filing out, or excuse me, Israel started filing out of Egypt there were folks who said, we're going to follow the crowd. We're just going to follow the crowd. They were not, they were not uh, of, of, the, of the lineage of Abraham. They were just following the crowd. And they're referred to in the Bible as the mixed multitude. Well, can I tell you, if you run with the mixed multitude, you'll not only be 
mixed up, you'll be messed up. Because God doesn't want you yoked up with the mixed multitude. Now, let me tell you this. I am thankful to have brothers and sisters to go to church with tonight. Oh, look at us closely and we got a flaw here or there. I know that, I know that. But you know what? This building is so much more better when it's got people in it than when it doesn't. I hear people talk about, oh, man, during COVID, didn't you love it? Didn't you love it during COVID? You know, church was getting out of church and all that. And I'm thinking, no, I'm thinking, I'm saying it. No, I didn't love it. The most miserable season of our lives. Couldn't come to the house of God. What, what our, our schedule, matter of fact, I don't know about you. Did anybody lose track of what day it was? Because I always know on Tuesday, tomorrow's church. And I always know on Thursday, we just have church. And I know on Saturday, we're going to have church tomorrow. And I know on Monday, we just had church. Oh, I thank God for the gift of my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I, I thank God, I'm going to tell you, it's, it, it, I, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a part of a mixed up multitude. I want to be with my church family. The mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting and the children of Israel They also wept. See, they had an effect upon them. The mixed multitude fell lusting and the children of Israel started weeping again and said, who shall give us bread? Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember, now listen to them talk now. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the the onions and the garlic. That doesn't sound very appetizing to me. But they said, we remember, we had fish to eat freely. I guess they forgot about being beaten and building pyramids. I guess they forgot about that. And verse 6, listen to them talk now. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna that is before our eyes. Now, wait a minute now. That manna is a gift from God. That manna, you should never start referencing referencing how good Egypt is with how great God is. They're starting to reference how they had it so good. Can I tell you, you got amnesia. You didn't have it good out there in the world. That's why you came to church is because you wasn't having it good out there. But if you don't watch it, if, 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 if you don't watch it, and you don't stay thankful for what God has given, you'll begin to get amnesia, and you'll begin to think, man, here I am in the church, and all we get to, all we do is go hear this manna preach. We just go hear the word. Same old thing, prayer before church, songs about coming out of graves and caves and darkness and light and all that. Then the preacher gets up, and then we pray a little bit and go home. Man, I had a party out in the world. I felt free out in the world. I got news for you. You are suffering from spiritual amnesia. You had bondage in the world. You had misery in the world. You had all those things in the world. Listen to them now. Listen to them. Our soul is dried away. We're about to shrivel up and blow away. There's nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. Now listen listen to the definition of this manna. And the manna was as coriander seed and the color thereof, the color color of Bedlam. And the people, now watch this now, please watch this. And the people went about and gathered it, manna, and ground it in the mills, and beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it, and the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil, And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Isn't it amazing that they couldn't accept the manna for the way it was? They couldn't accept it for the way it was. God sent it to them sweet. God sent it to them. It tasted good. But after a while, they just just couldn't be satisfied with it. They had to start putting it in the pan. They had to start beating it. They had to start trying to arrange a little bit. Folks, let's don't arrange. Let's don't try to improve on what God has given us. There is not a better message 
Then, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of, there's not a better message to be preached. Man, you talk about a happy pastor, Brother Young. You talk about a happy pastor, Brother Kenny. I came over here on Tuesday night. I came over here, I believe it's Tuesday night. Tuesday night, maybe it was Monday night. Maybe it's Monday night. Monday or Tuesday night, I came over here and a brother was in the, brother's in the parking lot and I met him and he said, Pastor, he said, we're in there. We've had Bible study and we just baptized two in the name of Jesus Christ. You can't improve on this right here. Are you hearing me tonight? You can't improve on having church the way God says to have church. You can't improve upon enter his gates with praise and into his courts with thanksgiving. You can't improve. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. You can't improve on this. You can't improve on this. You can't improve on it, but they tried to. They took it and beat it and they said we, we, we would that we had something to eat. All we've got is this old, old manna here. Now fall down to Numbers chapter 11. Chapter number 11 and verse number 18. It goes on in the story. And say, now God is telling Moses what to say to the people. They're, they're complaining about the manna. And God says here, he said, And say thou unto the people, Moses, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. And ye shall eat flesh. For you have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and you shall eat. Let me ask you this. How do you think it makes God feel when we compare this life negative to that life that he died to bring us out of? How do you think it made him feel? Hurt? Sure. But I'm going to tell you something. God's hurt turns into anger. He said, oh, oh, you want flesh to eat? I'll give you flesh to eat. I'll give you flesh. What, did we stop reading at verse number 18? Let, let me read verse 18. Let me, let, me read, let me read verse 18 again. And say thou unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and you shall eat... Flesh. I'm going to give you flesh. For you have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and you shall eat. Listen to God in verse 19. God says, You shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, neither twenty days, but even a whole month until it come out of your nostrils and it be loathsome unto you because that you have despised the Lord which is among you and have wept before him saying, why came we forth out of Egypt? God says, I'm gonna prove a point to you. You've got tired of what I've sent you. You're really gonna get tired of what the world's gonna give you. You're really, you see, I'm, I'm not going to give you meat to eat for a day, not for two days, not for 10 days, not for 20 days, but an entire month until you eat so much that it comes out your nostrils. Now go to verse 31 of the same chapter. Here it comes. And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it was a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Now, they're doubting God's power. They're doubting that God can take care of them. Watch God flex his muscles, so to speak. Watch God. He says, you're doubting? He says, you're doubting me? You're, you're doubting? You're doubting me? You're doubting that I can take care of you after I divided a Red Sea? You're, you're, you're doubting that I can do that after I've done all this for you? You're doubting? Watch what I'll do. And God causes a wind to bring quail in. I don't know how far he had to bring them, but he brought quail in, and I, I figured this up. A conservative number, a conservative number is that from the camp of Israel, 
15 miles in that direction and 15 miles in the other direction and two feet high was quail. You doubt my power to take care of you? You doubt that I can't watch out for you? As far as you can see, there's going to be quail and it's going to be two feet deep of quail. Now watch what they do. And see if you don't see something missing like I do. Verse number 32. And the people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next day. And it's, it's amazing to me how people can give time to the wrong thing but complain about time of the right thing. Nobody complains that a football game lasts about four hours. But let a church service go two hours and you got people not around here, but there are people that think that's rather strange. I don't, I don't hear that from around here. I think we're too busy enjoying Jesus. Park two miles away. People complain about giving a dollar in the plate. Park two miles away. Pay $25 to park in somebody's yard. Walk two miles. Get to a stadium and set your hinder parts on a concrete slab. And pay $4 for a Diet Coke, $8 for a hot dog, and sit there. Now, I'm not bad. If you do that, that's, that's well good for you. If you do that, I ain't preaching against you. But I am, if you're complaining about a parking lot that you just get out and walk just a few steps to get in this building and you get in here and there's people that there's people here that are loving God there's a nice there's a nice padded pew to sit down upon and you know what you don't have to wonder if you win or not anytime you come to the house of God you're a winner in Jesus name anytime you come to God's house They can't spend much time listening to Moses teach the word, but they can stay all day, verse 32, all that day and all that night and all the next day. Listen to that time. That's a lot of time there. And they gathered the quails. He that gathered least said the least amount was 10 homers. There's some research there that believes that's 10 donkeys that can carry as much quail as possible. They spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Now, now, now let, me, let me dive into Brother Carpenter here because this is my, this is my thought. I believe that this could be written different if they had saw that quail and at least, I know they're spoiled, but you can at least give God thanks. You can at least give God thanks for this. But not one time when they're looking at quail 15 miles that direction, 15 miles that direction, and two feet high, not one of them said, thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, oh great God. Miriam didn't get her tambourine out. Nobody broke out of praise. Nobody said, how great was our God. They just loaded up the donkeys and said, boys, ain't we gonna eat good? Can I tell you something? I believe that we get this from God. But anybody that I'm good to, all I expect back is a little thank you. That's, that's all I, that's, that's, if, if I hold the door for you at the restaurant and you're a complete stranger, all I really want you to say when you go by is, oh, where's the real people at tonight? Where's my real people at here? Come on, you know it's the truth. You do something for somebody out of the kindness of your heart and all you really want them to say back to you is, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for doing that. You know what that makes me want to do? That makes me want to be good to you again because thanks becomes a cycle. It becomes, a, it becomes something that goes around. The more we're thankful to God for, the more God wants to keep on blessing and keep on blessing and keep on blessing and keep on blessing and keep on blessing. Now, let me help us tonight. Let me help us tonight. Let me talk to you about how many of you would like for me to tell you a sign of the end of time? A sign of the end time. All right. Would you like to hear one? Would you like to hear one? 
unthankfulness. Oh, you thought I was talking about a mark on the forehead or somebody with a horn sticking out of their head or some kind of scanner or some, something like that. Yeah, that's all coming to pass too. But there's another spirit that's in the world at the end of time and that is people are unholy and unthankful. Let's never let that be said of us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I drove here to the house of God tonight. Thank you, God. I thank you tonight, God, for the privilege, God, to come to your house. Lord, this house is not a drudgery. Lord, this house is not a burden. God, my brothers and sisters are not full of faults. They're full of blessings. God, I just thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you that your hand is upon me tonight, God. I thank. Come on, give him some thanks right now. Give him some thanks. I'm talking about praying the will of God. God, I thank you that I'm still here. God, I thank you I've still got my testimony. God, I thank you for my family tonight, God. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. Verse number 33, and while the flesh was yet between their teeth, and I believe that God looked down and saw them just chewing on that, and God said, you could at least thank me. You could have at least, I'm going to tell you, this is not old-fashioned. I believe it's Bible to pray before you eat. I believe it's Bible to pray before you eat. None of this napkin praying either at the restaurant, you know. You don't really want to be seen praying so you drop your napkin. Oh, Lord, bless his food, Jesus name, amen. I'm talking about being thankful because there's millions of people on this earth today that did not eat. There are people that only eat every two or three days. I guarantee you they'd be thankful. They would be thankful. I, I just really believe we ought to thank God. Youth group, youth group, you, you go to Pizza Hut, you go to wherever you, boy, I just dated myself. Wherever you, wherever you go to eat, be thankful for it. Aubrey's down here when we take this place over on Sunday night, it ought to be a prayer meeting going around all them tables. Those waitresses ought to be standing. They're, they're praying for their food. They're, they're, they're praying being thankful, folks. I believe God looked down. I believe the whole thing could have been changed if they'd have stepped out there and said, whoa, how great is our God. Whoa, how awesome is our God. Wait a minute, folks. God has just showed to us he's greater than any Pharaoh. We never had this good. We never had this much food. To eat. We, ne we never had this kind of food. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I wonder, I wonder if this chapter would have not been written differently. But now it says this, and while the flesh was yet between their teeth and air, it was chewed. The wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Habataba, because there they buried, there they buried the people that lusted. This city means burial of the luster, burial of the luster. Can I tell you tonight, what we lust after that's outside of God will be the very thing that takes us to the graveyard. There, these are the graves of where, these are the graves of where they lusted. As a matter of fact, there's three cities that God executed his judgment. One city is called burning. The other city is called temptation. And the next city is what I just said to you. It is the graves of lusting. Burning, temptation, graves of lusting. Folks, tonight I'm preaching on prayer because prayerless people are people that are appeasing their flesh. If you are not praying, your flesh is in control. It's saying, give me this and give me that. But the thing is, what the flesh is asking is going to be the very thing that is our burial. We need prayer. We need to submit our lives to prayer and not a grocery list. Well, I tried praying, but God never answered my prayer. He doesn't, he's not obligated to answer your grocery list. But if I can start praying the will of God, 
What is the will of God? It's the will of God for lost souls to be touched by the Word of God. It is the will of God for our families to be saved. If we keep on praying the will of God, God, God listen, it's not maybe God will go touch your son. It, God will touch your son. It's not maybe God will deal with your neighbors. It is God will deal with your neighbors because you are praying. You are praying the will of God. If we're, not, if we're not praying God's will, our flesh is out of control and we begin to covet that which is forbidden. Covet, the word covet, simply means a, a desire that is based on pleasure. We begin to covet things that we believe will bring us pleasure. That's why in Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 17, the 10th commandment, the 10th commandment, and it may be the 10th commandment, but that doesn't mean it's not important. It's just as important as the first commandment. But look at the 10th commandment. The 10th commandment in Exodus 20 and verse 17, listen to God. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. The 10th commandment, the 10th commandment says, don't covet what's not yours. Don't have a desire for that which is not yours. You know why? You know what covetous robs us of? being thankful for what we've got. If I'm always coveting somebody else's house, I'll never get a house like somebody's got because I'm not being thankful for the house that God has given me. And, and, and what, what a spirit of covetousness does is takes your mind off of what you have and it puts your mind on what's not lawfully yours and he says, do not covet be thankful for what you have tonight, church. Develop a thankful spirit tonight. Don't, don't go through life feeling like a victim and feeling jealous because I don't live in this neighborhood or I, I don't wear those kind of clothes. Don't look at people walking in and get an old nasty spirit about you and I'll look at them going through there with their, those fancy clothes on. You need to get your eyes off what they're wearing and be thankful for what you've got on and say, God, I, I just thank you for my clothes tonight. I thank you for my shoes tonight. I thank you. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my wife. I th Come on, church. I thank you for what you have given me, God. I believe God will be more apt to give us something better if we are thankful for what God has given us now. Oh, I love him tonight, don't you? I love him tonight. Oh, I'm just coveting more money. If I could just get more money. Well, let's read about that in 1 Timothy chapter. Let's read about that in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5. Here's a group of people here that were preaching a doctrine. It was called the health, wealth, and prosperity doctrine. That way, they, they preached that if you were truly in the will of God, you would be healthy. If you were in the will of God, you would be healthy. If you were truly in the will of God, you would be wealthy. If you were truly in God's will, well, I'm here to tell you that doctrine don't float. You hear me? There's a lot of people that's in the will of God. If being, if being, if, if, if being healthy and all that's in the will of God, writer of over half our New Testament was out of the will of God. His name was Paul. All right? So, and, and, and you'll notice something too. You, you'll notice something too. That health, wealth, and prosperity doctrine that's being preached seems like they only want to funnel it to nations that are able to give back. What about all these nations that don't have anything to give back? They're just as lost as the nations that can give back. But this, these people here, these people here, they had this doctrine. Verse number five, 1 Timothy 6 and verse five. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds destitute of the truth. Supposing, here it is, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Get away from people 
that are saying the more you have is the more God loves you. And the more you have is the more prosperous. The more you have is the more that God sees and God's blessings is upon you. But look at it in verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Can I tell you what's really godliness is being content with what you've got. Just thanking God with what you've got. God, I just thank you tonight that I am who I am. I just thank you tonight, God, for my family. I thank you tonight, God, for every blessing that you put in my life. God, I'm truly content. I'm not going to go through life always wanting more. I'd be happy if I can get more. I'd be happier if I could live here. I'd be happier if I could drive that. Stop thinking that, church. Be thankful for who you are on a Wednesday night here you are got the blood of the royal king flowing through your veins you know the name of Jesus you ought to be thankful for it tonight oh let me let me keep on going but godliness why don't we read that verse together as a congregation that'd be really good why don't we read it together as a congregation read it read it out loud I'll start it but Is what kind of gain? Great gain. gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food, here's the standard for being content. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. How many tonight? Well, you got clothes on. We'll check that off the box. How many has got a refrigerator at home, got some food in it? Huh? Those are the two things that the Bible said you got clothes and you got food. You ought to throw your head back and say, I'm content with life. I'm just as content as content can be. But look at verse number nine. But they that will be rich, they got a desire to be rich. They will be rich. Fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some, here's the word again, coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Oh, let the pastor come out in me tonight. Let the pastor come out in me tonight. There is something more important than overtime. There is something more important than you taking a job that's keeping you out of Bible study. And it's not long. Well, it's just me, Brother Carpenter. My wife and my kids, they all go on to church. But let me tell you what's going to happen after a while. You're meant to encourage your wife. I'm not meant to encourage your wife. You're meant to encourage your wife. You're meant to encourage your children. Stop putting it on the youth group. We're here to provide the instruction. You're here to give the, 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 you're here to give the guidance. And after a while, the wife stops going. And after a while, the kids stop going. And after a while, you've got a son or a daughter that needs some treatment for some drugs and they need to get bailed out of jail. Can I tell you something? What's your overtime there? What's your extra money there? You're drowning in misery when you ought to just be content and say you know what I don't know if that'd be the will of God I believe the will of God is for me to make it to heaven not make more money I believe the will of God is for my family to be saved I don't want to have the love of money I wish somebody say pastor us brother carpenter for the love of money is the root of all evil the love of money is the root of all evil and I'm just going to tell you this and this is not on my notes tonight But you will always struggle with money until you align yourself in agreement with God's word. You'll always. I'll be less than a man of God to tell you anything different. Till you come into agreement with what God's word says about money, you're not smart enough. You can't work hard enough. You're going to put it in pockets that's got holes in it. So the best thing to do 
is to come into agreement with God's word, to come into agreement. And the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do for your children is to train them to tithe. It would be better for those children to come up. You see, when, 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 when you're, when you're uh, 20 or whatever and you come into church and you've never been trained, it's a big thing to step out by faith and do that. And, and, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you, back in my early days of living for God, I struggled with tithing. I'm just being transparent and telling you, I struggled tithing. I really, I really struggled with it for a little bit there in my, my infancy, my walk with God. But do you know what? My wife never struggled with tithing. My wife never struggled with tithing. She didn't come. She wasn't born into an apostolic church. She was born into a denominal church. But do you know in a denominal church, her mother taught her as a little girl that every dollar that God gets a dime out of every dollar. So when she came and God showed Sister Carpenter more truth, she was baptized with the Holy Ghost and filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. When she came in the apostolic church, it was no struggle at all. Why? She had been taught from a little girl to tithe. So the best thing we can do is make sure our children, they're mowing grass, they're babysitting, they're getting, and, 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 and here I go, I got a little pastoring coming out in me tonight. Got, got just a little pastoring coming out. Well, I give them allowance, that's already been tithed on. The best thing you could do to that child is to tell that child that is increase. And if I give you $5, see, see growing up, <laughs> growing up, we didn't get paid for being good. But they called us good for nothing. All right, we just, we, we, we just had to be good, all right? But now they give you allowance for being good and they give you $5 for being good. You ought, you ought to t- get them two quarters. You ought, to, you ought to get them tithe on that $5 and let them give and let it go on up through. Y'all may be seated tonight. But I'm here to tell you, you'll never, you'll never, you'll always struggle financially until you come into agreement with tithe and offerings. Well, let's, let, me, let me end this with this tonight. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. Talking about praying the will of God. Praying the will of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Praying the will of God. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, whatever you're going through, Come on, Paul and Silas. Whatever you're going through, you better give him thanks. Well, I don't feel like praising God. You better give him thanks. You better give him thanks. Whatever you're going through, you better start giving him thanks. You better start giving, give, giving, giving him thanks. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing. That's anxiety. Don't have anxiety over anything. Be careful. Don't have anxiety for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Colossians 3, 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Come on. I need an example. You could have no better example. You could have no better example to the man named Job, the man that lost his health, the man that lost his wealth, the man that lost it all in a 24-hour period. But watch him here, Job chapter 1, verse number 21. And Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ten children are dead. Job is giving God praise for his hand upon his life. Job is bankrupt. He don't know where the next day's money's coming from. But Job begins to give God thanks. He begins to give God praise. Oh, church family tonight, I don't know what you're going through, but I know a God that's greater than what you're going through. And he's waiting for the avenue of a thankful heart tonight. He's waiting for you. You're battling in your marriage. You're battling in your spirit. 
You're battling in your emotions. He's waiting for you to spring up upon your feet and raise both hands in the air and begin to say, God, I love you. God, I thank you. God, I praise you. God, I magnify you. Magnify you. Again, let me give you a hint. About 50 people got the hint. He's waiting for you to spring up on your feet. He's waiting for you to begin to give God praise. He's waiting for you to give God a honor tonight. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I'm praying your will tonight. God, I'm praying your will tonight. God, I'm praying your will tonight. God, I'm praying your will tonight. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, God. There's nobody done me any better than you. You've never done me nothing but good. I might, come on, somebody join me tonight. I praise him right now, Lord. I praise him. I praise him. I praise him. I praise him. I praise him tonight. 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 Well, why would you praise him? Help me on the screen tonight. Psalms 18, verse 29. Why would you praise him, Brother Carpenter? Why would you praise God tonight, Brother Carpenter? Because Psalms 18, 29 says it this way. For by thee have I run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all that trust in him. You know why I'm praising him? There's a troop out there trying to stop me, but by him I have run through a troop. Why are you praising him tonight? Because there's a wall in front of me and I can't go around it and I can't go under it, but I believe I can leap for joy and I can believe I can leap over a wall. Thankful. Thankful. Why would you want to praise him tonight? Why would you want to spend your time? Come on, help me on the screen now. Why would you want to spend your time Why would you want to praise Jesus tonight? Because Philippians 4 and 13 puts it this way. Philippians 4 and 13. Now let's read it all together. Could we read it all together? I can do... I can do... Let's read it again. Most things... Almost all things... I can do... That's why I'm praising Him tonight. Because I can do all things when I get in agreement with him. I'm not handing you my grocery list. God, I need you. You are the vine and I am the branch. You are the potter and I am the clay. God, I need you. And you think it's good? You think it's good to be in agreement with him? There's one other agreement I want to talk about tonight. And I want to be in agreement with you because something powerful happens when we're in agreement with each other. Oh, yes, something powerful happens when we're in agreement with each other. Come on, screen. I I, I need you to help me. I need you to help me tonight because I want to be in agreement with you. I want to be in agreement, Brother Tharp. I want to be in agreement with you tonight. And when we come to this place, there's one thing we got on our mind. J-E-S-U-S. There's one thing when we come in this place, Matt Martin, there's one thing we got in our mind, not on who won the Super Bowl or who's going to this league or that league, but when we come into this house, we got one thing and one thing alone on our mind. Jesus is on our mind. Oh, it's amazing when we're in agreement with God, but when we are in agreement with God, Come on, come on, screen, help me out tonight because something happens when I get in agreement with you. My strength becomes magnified when I get in agreement with my brother. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse number eight. And five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Oh, there's something about it. When we come into the house of God, my brother, and we're in agreement with each other, don't you love Jesus tonight? 
Don't you love his name tonight? Don't you praise his name tonight? Or has it grown common to you? Don't you love what he does? Don't you love how he treats you? Don't you love that he's a friend that stick a closer? Don't you love it tonight? Or are you tired of the manna? Are you waiting for something else to come along? I really like Brother Woodward. I really like Brother Tony. Hey, I do too. But we're all preaching the manna. Don't you love what he does? I close with this tonight. And if this is not the greatest testimony to the power of unity in our church, I don't know another scripture that could do it. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse number 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. That meant they all were in agreement. Hey, Pete, what are you doing here? I'm waiting on the Holy Ghost. Hey, Matthew, what are you doing here? I'm waiting on the Holy Ghost. Hey, Mary, I know you carried Jesus in your womb, but what are you doing here? I'm waiting on the Holy Ghost. Hey, Luke, what are you doing? I'm waiting on the Holy Ghost. Hey, was nobody there that was waiting on anything else but the Holy Ghost. And when God looked down from heaven and he saw 120 that were in one mind and one accord, the Bible said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set up on each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit. Come on church, what are you waiting on right now? I'm waiting on the Holy Ghost. Oh God, I praise you tonight, Lord. God, I magnify you tonight, God. God, I thank you for your Spirit. God, I thank you for your presence tonight. God, I thank you for your word tonight. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl that's here in this place tonight. God, there's not a one that I don't love. God, there's not a one that I, that, that, that I wouldn't want to see them here, God. There's not a one, God. I love them all tonight. I thank you, God, for my family. I thank you, God, for the church family tonight, God. Lord, I thank you for my wife. God, I thank you for my precious helpmate. God, I thank you for my precious handmaid. God, I thank you for my precious wife of 39 years. God, I thank you, Lord, for her love and faithfulness. I thank you, God, for her companionship to me for 39 years. God, I thank you for my three children. I thank you, God, for my two son-in-laws and my daughter-in-law. I thank you, God, for my five grandbabies. I thank you, God, for the workers here. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Come on. Lord, let a spirit of thanksgiving break out in this church. Oh God, let a spirit of thanksgiving. God, I thank you Sunday night we raised $82,000 from Mexico. Oh, I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Lord, 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 I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you tonight, God. Lord, I thank you. Church family, one more time. Just one more time. Just one more time. Just one more time. Thank you. Thank you, God. Every pew ought to have somebody being thankful right now. If you're on a pew and ain't nobody got their mouth open, please be the first. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. Something happens when we become thankful. Something happens when we become thankful. Something, something begins to happen when we become thankful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Something begins to happen. Thank you, Lord. Something begins to happen. Something begins to happen. Just, just pray another moment. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling something in the Holy Ghost right now. I'm feeling a little something in the Lord right now. Just, just thank Him right now. I'm just... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
man to man, woman to woman. Just reach over and pray for somebody right now. Thank you, Lord. I, I thank you, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you, God. Lord, I thank you for Matt and Marin Purdue. God, I thank you for Elder Brother John Stone. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. Just reach over and start thanking him, God. Lord, look, Maddie Cooper needs to be healed right now tonight. God, Maddie Cooper needs to be healed right now tonight. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray over Maddie Cooper right now. Lord, I thank you for all the healings that you've done. God, I thank you for all the healings, God, that you've done. God, I pray for Maddie Cooper right now. Lord, I pray, God, that you would heal Maddie right now. God, clear up all the infection that's in Maddie's body right now, Lord. Come on, in the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, church family, right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to give me another blessing. God, you don't have to do another thing for me. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Lord, touch Maddie right now. Oh, God, touch Maddie right now, God. Lord, touch that little, touch that little girl's body right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you. I thank you for the stripes on your back, Lord. I thank you that you paid for our healing. I thank you tonight, God. I thank you, God. I praise you, God. Oh, I thank you, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I'm talking about praying the will of God. I'm talking about praying the will of God tonight. I'm talking about praying the will of God. I want to send you out of this place tonight. I want, I want to send you out of here at three minutes to nine o'clock. I want to send you out of here. And I, I, don't, I, I know that when I say this, I know that when I say this, that we'll get a little uncomfortable for a moment. But if you've got marital issues, you've got marital issues, you and your, you and your mate, y'all got some issues, I want to do some counseling right now. And you tell me by Sunday if things are not better. Start thanking God. Start thanking God for your mate. Start thanking God for your mate. Start thanking God for me. I got news for you. You can't gripe and can, you can't gripe and be thankful at the same time. Some of you got some kids. I'm just going to ask you: start being thankful, because I promise you, somebody somewhere has got it worse than what you have, and they're making it. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me tonight. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.